I mean, tell me about the Kansas City Chiefs. Just your takeaway right away. I, 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 you know, I'm one of those guys that thought the Super Bowl was going to be a jump off point to where it's going to like take the pressure and the shackles off them. And it's just going to unleash like this ultra confidence, you know, let's let it fly. And we're just going to become greater type attitude from Kansas City. Do you sense that? What, what was your sense of them overall as a team and where they're at coming off the Super Bowl, Peter? Just remember, Chris, they were behind by 24 to Houston, by 7 to Tennessee, and by 10 to San Francisco with eight minutes to go. So it's not like we're seeing the 27 Yankees or the 74 Patriots or, or Steelers, rather, or, or whatever, one of these Patriots teams. And again, I think they're the best team in football right now. But... I also think that this is going to be a weird year. You don't know how this can affect people. And it, it, in the two practices I saw, first of all, Sammy Watkins has, uh, I think it's a back issue that has kept him out of some practice so far. Uh, and although he's going to return to practice this week, the, I watched Tyreek Hill go down with a little bit of a tweak groin and not go down, but just sort of, you could tell that something happened on a ball that he caught. Right. The only thing, only point I'm making is that when you have a receiving core with a lot of these finely tuned athletes, you know, who, who might get tweaks here and there, that's one of the reasons. Like I wrote in my column, I said, you know, if, if, if Henry Ruggs had fallen, that, you know, there was a decent shot that if it was fallen down far enough, that Brett Veach, the GM of the Chiefs, would have tried to trade for him, trade up for him, and I, and I, which sounds insane, but it is the truth. The one other thing I would say, Chris, everyone right now is getting ready for their fantasy drafts, and in uh, I'll just give you a scene from both days of camp. Yeah, go ahead. The I know where you're going to go. Four, the first four snaps of 11 on 11, offense, defense, right. added practice. First four snaps on on uh, uh, Wednesday, all handoff, handoffs to Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. First three snaps on Thursday, handoffs to Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Also on Thursday, he ran a wheel route out of the backfield and the pass was behind him. Mahomes threw a pass, the pass was behind him. He caught it one-handed. He brought it in without even... I mean, it looked like something he did in his sleep. So everybody who looks at the Kansas City Chiefs this year, it's, oh, man, there's not enough balls to go around. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is not going to be that great. Oh, yeah? Well, just come to the games. And remember, Kareem Hunt, week one, yeah, 2017. Right. Yeah. 246 yards against the New England Patriots. And beating Dante Hightower on a wheel route out of the backfield for a 74-yard touchdown. And he had a fumble early in that game, but Andy Reid still had yeah. faith in him. I remember his that. His first vividly. carry. Yeah. yeah. And, and he had never fumbled like at all in his college career. It was the first time in years that yeah. he had put the ball on the ground. But Edwards Hilaire is a guy now. The cat's out of the bag. You've written about it. Chris and I have been talking about Clyde Edwards Hilaire the entire – I feel like we're almost maybe propping the guy up too much, but I, I don't think it's – it's unjustified when you consider you're plugging him into that offense. Damian Williams, the starting running back from last year, has opted out for the entire season. This is the Clyde Edwards-Hilaire show. And even though Andy Reid doesn't have a reputation for three yards and a cloud of dust, if he has a guy who can do it and the defenses are keeping everyone deep to not be burned by Tyree Kill and Sammy Watkins and the opening is there, at some point you're going to just run the ball. Right, Peter? One of the interesting things, and Chris, you would you would understand exactly, you know, because you've obviously studied offenses intricately, but I found, you know, as somebody who knows Andy Reid very well told me that I said, how will Mahomes be different this year? And, you know, because I asked Mahomes, okay, what did you work on this offseason? He goes, you know, making quicker decisions recognizing defenses quicker. And that just comes with age and experience. But the interesting thing about the Reed offense is that he's got so many tributaries off every play. Right. He can run them in different ways. Like, I saw a bunch formation, 
a tight bunch formation with Hill, Hardman, DeMar- Demarcus Robinson. And on one of the snaps, okay, Clyde Edwards Hilaire went into like jet motion across the rear of the formation and he almost ran out of bounds. You know, he stopped almost right at the sidelines. And I'm watching that. And then the next one, he runs the same kind of formation. Right. You know, with that bunch. And he just ran a little wheel route out of the backfield. So what I'm what I'm saying is all these plays, and he's not alone. Andy Reid's not alone. Everybody in the NFL does this. But it's really noticeable. And on one deep throw to Tyreek Hill that I saw on Wednesday, the secondary, you could tell, this is the number one secondary. They're pointing here, there, everywhere. And, and, and Tyreek Hill just zooms by Bashad Breeland, and it's an easy touchdown from Mahomes. And look, everybody has spent the offseason studying the Kansas City Chiefs. All I know is that I know Reed. He's, he's studying ways to look a little bit different in 2020. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.